Hello. Okay. So I'm going to start very short because I actually want these people to introduce themselves because they're living the life. They're understanding, they're contributing, and they contribute to Bitcoin every single day. And none of them are Bitcoin devs. So how are they really contributing to Bitcoin? Paco, could you introduce yourself first? Hi, namaste, Bitcoiners. My name is Paco. I'm from India. I have been traveling over the last two years using Bitcoin. And this was possible, possible because of you all who supported me with your sats. So I love you all. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Pamin Andonov. I'm from Bulgaria. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm a software developer, but I discovered Bitcoin through the financial aspect, through sa as savings technology. And pretty much what I do uh, with Bitcoin for Bitcoin is I'm the loudest voice of Bitcoin in Bulgaria. My goal is to orange peel as many as possible uh, Bulgarians. Uh, throughout the past uh, four years, we had three conferences uh, in Bulgaria, uh, Bitcoin conferences, and uh, just three months ago, we opened the first Bitcoin bar in Bulgaria. Woohoo! Woo! Hola a todos. Eh, bueno, well, I try to speak English. <laughs> I try to oh, speak well. English. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Napoleon Osorio. I am the first driver in El Salvador in accepting Bitcoin. And I the first student in, uh, of my first Bitcoin. And I, this moment I, I, try, I had the opportunity to speak for years. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> This is on. Hey, y'all. Uh, I'm Fractal Encrypt. I am a Bitcoin artist, and I try to basically use my art as a medium to get people interested in Bitcoin in a different way. You guys just saw these amazing authors. Like, so they, cool. oh, they contribute. Oh, okay. So you guys just saw some amazing authors. They contribute. She mentioned Bitcoin developers. They contribute. Everybody's contributing in their own way. I kind of felt like I'm an artist. What can I do? Um, but also... I get inspired by Bitcoin, so um, I think that I just have to follow my inspiration and other se people seem to be interested in what I'm doing. So I find a lot of validation from just kind of creating a message that Bitcoin is something wholesome, it's something good, it's something actually beneficial, it's a tool for self-sovereignty, and it's something that people need to use. And I just tell it in a visual way. So instead of using words or code, I just use images. And I just think it's important to bring people into Bitcoin in a different way because not everybody learns the same way or gets interested in things. So this is my sly roundabout way of getting people into Bitcoin. So I try to make something that's pretty. So you just look at it and it's something interesting to look at, whether you like Bitcoin or not. And hopefully it just at least looks good. And if you are into Bitcoin a little, you know, you can actually pull some things out of it. And if you're really deep into Bitcoin, there's still some stuff in there that I try to make, you know, interesting for you and something that you can go away from it learning. So, Okay, so um, basically we have an artist. Actually, okay, Napoleon is very humble and he says he's a driver. But right now, Napoleon is the owner of BitDriver and they're serving El Salvador with what it looks uh, like taxi services transportation services and they rent cars so like if you're moving to el salvador and you need like a van to go pick you up from the airport with your kids and your wife and your dog and your cat and like 300 boxes napo is providing that and you're paying with lightning so that is like amazing we have a bar owner i mean i love paying for my gin tonics with that so thank you that is super cool and that is like an amazing way to have bitcoin bitcoiners gather at your place but also you're bringing your people and they'll be seeing all this bitcoin stuff and instead of us asking hey can i pay in bitcoin they will probably be like what is this and how does it work and you're just orange peeling right there and then i was asking paco like how do i introduce you right like what is paco doing and he's like oh i'm a scammer <laughs> but he's not uh fractal said it very well he's an explorer he's like carrying like Bitcoin around the world and he's doing it on a Bitcoin standard. So he's the one going to other bars that are not Bitcoin bars, going to other taxi drivers, going to artists, telling them, hey, can I pay in Bitcoin? And making sure that they learn how they can get payments in Bitcoin. So all these four people are making our Bitcoin re dreams a reality as well. I think the topic for the whole day has been that, how people are making Bitcoin dreams a reality. So I want to, first of all, I'm going to be translating for Napo. So I want to ask him 
a question and my question right now Napo is um why did you decide to accept payments in Bitcoin in El Salvador? Um, was it because of the law? Were you like, oh yeah, now my country is a Bitcoin country. I love Bitcoin. Or how did this happen? Okay. Entonces, eh, la pregunta es, si, ¿qué, ¿qué te hizo decidir empezar a tomar pagos con Bitcoin? Eh, fue como que eh, tu país se volvió Bitcoin legal tender. Y dijiste como, ay, amo Bitcoin y ahora soy full Bitcoiner. O más bien fue como que... Dijiste, ¿alguien te enseñó algo? ¿Aprendiste algo? ¿Algo te llamó? Eh, bueno, la verdad que al principio eh, yo me había quedado desempleado y simple y sencillamente se dio una coincidencia. Yo trabajaba en Uber y conocí, de repente me cayó una, un, un um, pedido y eh, casualmente ese pedido al final de la conversación fue John, que es el fundador de mi primer Bitcoin. Y debido a eso que él comentó que iba a haber un, un gran evento, yo dije, bueno, eh, muchos bitcoiners vienen aquí al país y como nadie lo entiende, eh, nadie le va a aceptar bitcoin porque simple y sencillamente no se había enseñado. Entonces en ese momento tomé la decisión de aceptar bitcoin y desde ahí comenzó todo. Ok, so Napo actually like just seized the opportunity. He was without a job and he was just like Uber driving and one day he woke up and like had a call for like, it was like his last trip of the day. And he went to pick up someone at the airport. And the guy that he picked at the airport was actually John, the founder of Mi Primer Bitcoin. And he told him all about how there is a Bitcoin event and there's a bunch of people coming in. And Apple was smart. And he was like, you know what? Like, well, I should be taking Bitcoin payments if all these people are going to come and pay in Bitcoin because that I'm the only one who's going to be making all this money. And he grabbed his sats. So he was pretty genius. Um, for you guys, it's very different. You don't come from a Bitcoin, like you're not in a country where like, oh, there's a bunch of Bitcoiners coming. Why did you, you're a dev, but you're not a Bitcoin dev. So why did you, what makes you think a Bitcoin bar is going to be successful? All right. So I'm the leader of the largest Bitcoin group in Bulgaria, Bitcoin community. And uh, I started the, the community because... I'm a Bitcoin since 2017. I started my work in uh, my country in 2020. I started because uh, it was post halving. I knew that a new Bitcoin bull run is gonna come. And uh, with the rise of prices, speculators uh, enter the market. And of course, alternative uh, cryptocurrencies attract, uh, uh, you know, like uh, speculators trying to make uh, quick money. And uh, I started educational uh, videos on the topic of what is blockchain, what is Bitcoin, what is the difference between Bitcoin and everything else. Uh, what problem does uh, Bitcoin solve? Because un unless someone uh, understands the problem, it's very hard for him to see any value in Bitcoin. This is where the whole meme comes from. Oh, Bitcoin just wastes energy. Like, no, is your air conditioning wasting energy? It isn't because you actually need it. So about the bar, it's a tool for the Bitcoin community, a place where we can all gather, a place where we can bring um, their friends, their family, their colleagues, who do not understand Bitcoin and they can come, they can see we're just normal people, you know, we are not uh, that crazy and uh, they can actually see that yes, Bitcoin is money. Okay, and um, Fractal, you said that you just wanted to contribute, right? And basically the best way for you is to do what inspires you. But how has like doing art for Bitcoin changed you as an artist where the art, like how is your art different from what it was before? Uh, well, you know, I think like I'm going to kind of sidetrack the question a little because I think in terms of the way that I wanted to contribute to Bitcoin, I almost find this more interesting in a way because I I was trying to do a, an art project. For example, I made these uh, comic books called the Time Chain Codex and I made 210 editions and I was wanted to make each one special. So I kind of created a Bitcoin public key and private key for each edition. So each one has like a special certification of authority just that's actually done entirely on Bitcoin. Um, and the time when I was doing it was on Taproot and we were po like promised kind of full, sig full signature aggregation, which would mean I could take all these addresses and kind of create a cool treasure hunt. So if somebody had like 21 of these addresses, 21 of the 210 addresses, then it would unlock a treasure. So it would kind of like make it so people would have to get together and collude or somebody would have to buy all, you know, 21 of them to try to get access to move the Bitcoin that was hidden in these keys. Um, and to do this, Taproot introduced a whole new multi-signature structure. And 
I had to basically learn this because like when I went to create the multi-signature addresses, apparently the instructions in Bitcoin Core just weren't there. You know, they had instructions for everything else, but Taproot was so new, it, it just wasn't there. So I needed it for my art project. So I, I was motivated. I went, I figured out exactly how to do it. And once I did, I actually told my friend and he's like, okay, so that's not in the documentation in Bitcoin Core. You need to add that. You need to actually do a PR and submit it. And so I'm an artist and now I'm like submitting a PR to Bitcoin Core. Like, are you serious? Okay. So he like walks me through the whole process. I write out the PR and part of that is that you have to compile Bitcoin Core from source, run it, make sure it, do it doesn't fail any tests, like your change doesn't break Bitcoin basically before anybody else is going to trust you to run it. And you have to prove it. So part of the PR is saying, okay, I ran the test and I prove it. But to do that, I actually had to like, okay, I changed the documentation in my own version of Bitcoin Core. So no one else on the planet has this. I compile it, I run it. I open the QT, I run the help command, and there is my line of code, like just with everybody else is like, and, and basically so amazing. So I submit it to the, you know, so, okay, my friend helps me submit the pull request. And once I do that, he's like, oh, okay, this is awesome. He's like, okay, well now the work's not done. You know, now you got to get people to care about this. No one's going to just merge your pull request if no one cares about it. I was like, you're serious? So... Then I had to actually kind of like marshal the troops and say, hey, we, we need to do this because of this. And it actually is just something that was missing. And um, so I was actually kind of contributing something to Bitcoin. So any, any of you that are running Bitcoin Core right now, you could just run the help command for taproot descriptors and you're going to see my line. Like I am part of Bitcoin forever. It feels like putting a little piece in the pyramids, you know, like I don't put the whole thing, but it just I put like one little block at the base of the Great Pyramid. So that's kind of like a neat story in terms of how art helped me contribute to Bitcoin. Like I have no business being a Bitcoin core contributor. I'm an artist. Like how is this even possible? But Bitcoin is just magic. So, that's my thing. so yeah, basically. <laughs> the, um, jumping off that, like, yeah, Bitcoin is just magic and everybody's contributing in a different way. I want to ask, um, not them, I want to ask Paco how it's like his contributions have been very different because it's kind of really hard to live in this fiat world, going around, be, being like talking to people. I think like you have a big challenge of like people being skeptical and thinking you're an actual scammer. So can you explain that a little bit? How is that experience? And can you please just go on the fact that how do you make sure that you still live on a Bitcoin standard and that you're not a scammer. Like, what do you tell people? Because all these people here actually, like, maybe they're not devs and they do want to contribute. And what you're doing is like the base layer to that contribution. Um, I, I am not a scammer, guys. I am not like, if you give me one Bitcoin, I'll run with it and I'll come back with two. Um, I basically, uh, I read only one book that's called The Bitcoin Standard. I read it. I just want to say this out clear. If I knew what Bitcoin really is, which I learned over three years, I wouldn't have done this journey called Run With Bitcoin because I'm really scared for my privacy now. But um, one of the greatest things was educational aspect. And as I said earlier, Thai shall ask, Thai shall receive. So I just started asking random people, would you accept Bitcoin? And people are really okay to taking risks because we are risk takers. That's what we are. We were born to take risks. And people are ready to take risks for $5, $10, and $20, $50, $100. The biggest Bitcoin expenditure I did was climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Huh. I paid my guide with Bitcoin. Bitcoin was $40,000. I came back six days later, Bitcoin was $30,000. <laughs> so my guide was really angry with me. I had to pay him more Bitcoin. Uh, but such is life. So I understood the educational aspect was really missing. And everybody has been scammed. Everybody has lost their money thanks to Shiba Inu. That's going to $1. Ooh. Um, and people are just counting on a lot of these shit coins. And because of that, as, is, as they say, once bitten, twice shy. So people are really scared of Bitcoin because Bitcoin is used as a synonym to every other shit coin. Like, because Bitcoin goes up, everything goes up. And in this entire process, I learned education was something that needed. And it used to go from anywhere between five minutes to 30 minutes to speaking to somebody. Once it took me at least four days to convince this old man to accept Bitcoin. He was 67 years old. And in the end, he accepted Bitcoin just because he loves gambling. 
so yes please uh, take out your time every second every minute you spend on a random stranger that's like you're sowing a good seed of karma and karma is what goes around comes back around and bitcoin is giving us this opportunity to share this love with random strangers so if you can do this with five people around you you're blessed if you can do with 10 you're lucky so yeah thank you okay so this is a super short panel but i'm going to ask a question that all of you can answer and it's like you are all contributing but how has living this bitcoin life contributed to you guys um la pregunta es cómo ha hecho o sea están contribuyendo para bitcoin de todos de una manera distinta pero cómo ha cómo ha bitcoin contribuido a la vida de ustedes so i quit my pretty much my day job in uh, late 2020 and until that point i remember that i was focusing on my career i was focusing on uh uh just making better living making more money and what has changed since i stopped doing that doing the rat race is that before that i was literally just selling my time to get money pay my rent pay my bills pay for my life and what has changed since i focused full time on bitcoin is that now i do not feel like i'm selling my time i do what is important to me what i think is the best way i can contribute literally to the human species uh, so for me i think uh, bitcoin has been extremely transformational and that's part of the reason that i make bitcoin art is because i see it as a transformational technology that people can use for self sovereignty and i want to kind of use art as a medium to spread that message and on a personal level it's certainly changed my art and the way that i create art i think um but i it's actually just had so many different other effects in my life kind of like he said like my time preference has changed dramatically uh the way that i think about things like when i make an, an art piece now i think that i want someone to hold this for 100 years a thousand years if i'm lucky like it's just not impossible because people today like have paintings still that are hundreds of years old even maybe a thousand years old so it's not impossible to create something that people will care about and treasure and um you know basically ca care about enough to bring into the future so i try to see if i can ever create something that people will care about enough you know really i just want to make something cool um but like it's even changed things about my health like i changed basically i feel like i'm still going through the transformation i'm not anywhere near finished like i'm i'm very like early in the process and i still have a lot to go so i'm still in my cocoon so we'll, we'll see where it goes yeah. uh bitcoin has changed my life by meeting you all i finally am part of a tribe that is like a silent evolution is not a revolution it's an evolution of the human mankind i cannot hang out with normies anymore i hang out with bitcoiners because we are going towards a place that is the time preference we are building not for us not for our kids but for generations and that has given me more time to think about who i am and why i am on this world and i just love the philosophy of bitcoin which has got us connected here so thanks to you all be lovely and little less toxic It is right. Bueno, Bitcoin, Bitcoin ha contribuido inmensamente a mi vida. Eh, puedo decir de que prácticamente tomar la decisión eh, eh, de eh, tomar la decisión de aprender más, aparte de enseñar a la gente y aprender más de Bitcoin, ha cambiado tanto como mi manera de pensar, eh, de una manera filosófica, económica, ya que me ya que te, eh, he tenido más oportunidades, eh, tanto como de mejora para mí y para mi familia. So basically Napo says that Bitcoin like totally changed everything in his life because it just gave him a chance to actually have opportunities to give to him his family and to himself. So Bitcoin has contributed to all of these people. They're contributing to Bitcoin. You don't need to be a dev to contribute to Bitcoin. You 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 don't even need to be a dev to contribute to Bitcoin core. And this is what these people are here to show you all. We are all here. We all have a play, a, a role to play. 
And I just want everyone to give them a big applause and feel inspired and go do the same. Keep contributing in your own way. Thank you, everybody. Well, you can really. I'm sorry.